gentlemen, boys and girls, and anyone anywhere in between. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Cheers for coming up here. Oh, 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 oh you're lovely. Oh, my dear. Hello, and uh, welcome to Cornucopia. This is my first trip here, my first trip to Dublin. Yeah. Hey. up with you if you can just knock them like on silent or turn them off or, or whatever that would be amazing amazing my name if you don't know me i'm dominic berry Ooh. i'm a poet um i am here celebrating world vegan month <laughs> oh yes oh yes i'm here with the amazing group vegan island and for the next side half hour i'm going to regale you with some performance poetry. Put your hands up if you've been to a performance poetry event before. Mm -hmm. no. Loads of you haven't. Oh, you're very, true. <laughs> very good. I'm, I'm one of the best. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, Joe, this is my full time job. I'm a poet who travels all around the place, and there's not a day that goes by when I think, don't think, you know, how lucky I am to be doing this. Mm. I wasn't always lucky. You know, at school, I was really, really bullied. I went to uh, a little countryside school in the middle of like the Welsh Valley. It's a beautiful place. My mum still lives there. Love is seen. Gorgeous place. Not that great for me as a kid. For a few reasons. One, I was vegan in the middle of a big farming community. So that didn't go down very well. <laughs> Secondly, our family were really poor and I've never had fancy clothes. These days I don't care. I all my clothes from charity shops. I'm proud of that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But as a, yeah. Woo. But, um, yeah, yeah. Woo. but you know, as a kid, when all the other kids have got expensive clothes, you know, I got picked on for that. Thirdly, I was picked on for being gay. <coughs> I know, bombshell moment, but I've come out to you. Now that sounds a huge shock to all of you that this towering figure of testosterone and masculinity could ever be a gay. But it's, I can particularly see disappointment in your eyes. <laughs> I know. I'm sure in an alternate dimension, you and me are at it like rabbits. <laughs> sadly, you know, I can see the look in your eyes, but it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. So, um, yeah. And the final reason I was picked on at school was not just was I a gay, but I was a really, really gay gay. I was the gayest of gays. I was like a really effeminate child with big, wriggly arms like an octopus being electrocuted. It's like so, so, so picked on. So um, this is a poem about being at school. And um, those of you who are vegan in the room, you, you might have once or twice in your life perhaps been unfairly treated for being vegan. So maybe this poem will resonate with you. It's called Men in Suits. And it goes like this. I did not drown. I drowned a dream. You see, I'd always dreamt that I was going to conform like men in suits, boys in school uniform. I'd always dreamt that I was going to march through life and proudly wear clothes men had worn, men in suits. Boys in school uniform, tight, white clothes, can disguise in their handsome shades of truth the things that kill, or at least cripple, youth. Their hearts look smart, they are really smart, but they're not warm. Men in suits, boys in school uniform. Did not drown. I drowned a dream of dressing in that style when I learned that I never would. Well, I never could. Not while what filled those hearts would tear and gash. I mean, viciously fighting for some designer trash. I heard the sound of a shirt getting torn, men in suits, boys in school uniform. I stripped. 
Down to my swimming trunks. Dear old desire of trendy junk, competitive greed now defunct. I dived into water that was clear, free. I was able to see that my confidence, it was far from shrunk. I rose up like Neptune, pierced and punk, thrust my trident far and near, and blast my conch shell down your ear. I did not drown. Let me make that clear. All I did was drown a dream. I'm still here. Again, it's my first trip to Dublin, but I feel quite confident that we've collected the uh, most intelligent and sexiest people in Dublin here in this room. This is that is that fair? All people in Dublin as sexually attractive as those in this room? Or have we got Dublin sexual elite here today? Yes, excellent. Oh. Well, I would happily make any one of you my life part. You know, I love you all that much. Um, so yes, coming out as gay, how scary, how scary, but not nearly as frightening as that. <gasps> really, really scary day that I said, I am coming out as <laughs> a vegan. <laughs> oh, all right then, all right, maybe not today. Well, I am afraid. Don't single me out from the pack. <laughs> Anything but that. Well, I would love to be an ace, a king, a Jack the Lad, all rugged and mean, but no. I know I am a celery munching queen. <laughs> I'm a sappy, soppy fruit. I can't change the hand I've been dealt, it's limp. <laughs> Like watercress, I confess, I ravish radishes, crave Brussels sprouts, but I'm a closet vegan, and I'm not coming out. Oh, I have tried to be like those beef stocky guys raised on pork pies, strutting to the beat of a deep battered drumstick, big men with Big Max sized super muscle flexing troopers. I pretend that I'm like them. Struggling home with my shopping bags, I've tried to hide my veggie mints. Tried to look rough, steak acting, steak looking. You tell me I'm normal, I will sacrifice any lamb if you tell me I am one of the gang and not a gooseberry. Anything but that. And so my queer desires I've kept under lettuce wraps. But like any iceberg, most of me is concealed. I still secretly savour celeriac. Prefer asparagus to veal. The only blood I sucks from orange it sends me to Nirvana. In my bedroom under quilt, I'm peeling my banana. <laughs> then I chew over a new thought. Teeth slowly grind. All this mastication almost made me blind. It's here and it's clear and it hits like lemon zest. This cucumber cool, this washes way all bitterness. Tear up those cards, grind them to pulp and gulp down fear with a sip of peppermint tea. Switch on the internet. Pull up my trousers. Google. Vegan men. And find vegan men are not all big girls' blouses. <laughs> but I am. <laughs> yes, check that mirror. What a peachy fella. This pumpkin's turned into Cinderella. No feeble side salad. I am the main dish. Golden delish right to my core. Olive skin full of beans coming out. I'm proud. Show those porkers. I got 
nuts! Why do everyone be part of that cold, carnivorous crowd? I mean, real <coughs> men? Or chickens? Gouging their gravid pie? The truth, like onions, would make most of those lily-livered boys cry. They're as macho as... as... as nachos. Strong, virile, quick. How many of them could break the neck of a little boy chick? Or take a calf away from his mother? Or clip out a piglet's teeth? Maybe those men are like icebergs too, and their truth is hidden beneath. Overcome conditioning, there's an inner voice. I think it's normal to be caring. Now, I don't think compassion's a choice. I think it's a part of who we are, like love, like sex, like skin. This one small step took me so far. Swap foie gras for Mardi Gras. My new taste buddies cheer. Hurrah, let the party in. Oh, what the world do you know? Gotta let it show. I'm coming. Pop my cherry. Dance and shout. Yes, I am vegan. I'm coming out. Yeah. <laughs> Dominic Berry's penis. <laughs> so would you know? And why wouldn't you think such a thing? Well, let me answer your telepathic question. Well, it's really funny you should all think that because um, I recently did a um, form poetry um, using my words and my penis on Channel 4. And if you do want to see my penis, you've got 4 OD and it's the who looks <laughs> what happened was, um, I go around performing poetry all over the place, and a group of uh, nudists said, well, they're not nudists, because nudists is a, but I don't know what you'd call them, their whole thing is a very political thing, kind of anti-fashion, anti the, the textile industry as it is, and um, they said, you know, you've got lots of poems about body image, and whatnot. would you perform some? Everybody in the crowd would be naked, you don't have to. It's being filmed for a Channel 4 documentary. Well, I've got two things. I've got one, film for a documentary, I've heard that before, like, that's going to happen. <laughs> Secondly, I thought, well, if everyone else is going to be naked, I'm not going to be the only club. I've never done anything like it before. Why not give it a go? Well, <laughs> Channel 4 were there. And as I, as I had the camera upon me and I, uh, I took off my underwear, I thought, I wonder if this is a really big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't. I look amazing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, check it out. I've also, I've also, you can also see on BBC iPlayer, I recently did some children's poetry on a, on a children's show called um, Ride Rocket. I wore a different outfit. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that's me. Well, so, oh, I'm going to do a new poem, a poet's favourite friend, a scruffy bit of paper. It's another vegan poem, people. And um, it started off as a really sincere love epic for a sandwich and um but it does kind of descend into puns <laughs> right i don't know how, how do people like puns in double so find out <laughs> so what i would love right what i'd love is if my puns filled you with such raucous laughter you threw back your heads in a hearty guffaw if that doesn't happen i don't ask much of you my audience i don't ask much of you but i demand this yes I said demand. <laughs> I demand this, right? I demand, if not a laugh, at least a groan. <laughs> right? So don't start off with the puns. We get on to this. A brand new pun. It's called Oh Sandwich. And it goes like this. <laughs> love. 
Perseminati, as gooey as wet putty. I must confess I am obsessed with this delicious butty. That's a very Manchester word. Do you say butty in Dublin? Do I need, to, do I need no. subtitles? Do we know what butty is? Yeah, yeah. No. Oh, lovely. Oh, with this. Sorry for breaking out of the poem. I thought you, you with your horns, you look the cleverest. <laughs> <laughs> with this delicious butty. Your beetroot gets me blushing. Your tempo gets me rushing. More than a snack, I can't hold back. Your gherkins get me gushing. <laughs> Tomatoes with spinach so green. And quinoa gets me oh so keen. Well, your peanut butter has got me so up. Utterly scared that I might make a scene. Oh, sandwich, my love! Will you just let me relish your relish? You must! Oh, bread! My gosh, you're so very posh. You really are quite upper crust. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the level I'm pitching. That's, that's the level, that's no, you know. You know, we're trying, you, oh, Brent, oh my gosh, you're so very posh, you really are quite upper crust. <laughs> oh, Brent, my love won't go stale. <laughs> I need to know your love won't fail. You need you, you need your bread. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need to know your love won't fail. So don't leave me lame. Would you feel the same if our roles were reversed? Uh, You're so very yummy. I know that my jokes have been crummy. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. I've mustered the strength. All right, so bread pun. All right, I know. <laughs> mustard in bread, don't you? Don't look at me like that. <laughs> I've mustered the strength. Oh. Keep puns at arm's length, and yet I still think with my tummy. <laughs> I know that no meat, egg or fish have touched you, you wonderful dish. I'll say it again, you're 10 out of 10, the definition of delish. And yet, vegan treats call all around. Don't eat me. Don't eat. That's how vegan treats call. <laughs> Don't eat me. Taste me now. I don't think I can be a one butty man. There's a new vegan taste I have found. Oh, sandwich, what a naughty mistake. I'm afraid that your heart, I must break. I found a new lover. I'm obsessed with another. I now belong to chocolate cake. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I have a book for sale, and um, I'm going to perform one of the poems from it now. Um, I meant to talk about the naked stuff now, actually, because this ties in. This is a poem about being naked. It's a bit. I want. I want to display my range for you this evening. It's, it's, it's so used as poets. Yeah, I'm like vampires. It's like every time it's midnight. <laughs> what are you saying, Barry? Do the poems? Um, so I'm a. Uh, I grew up in Wales. I've spoken a little bit about the negative sides of having that as your upbringing, but it's a beautiful area. Has anyone ever been to Pembrokeshire? No. It is. It is exquisitely beautiful, my. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure Ireland's more lovely. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, on the, the Pembrokeshire National Coastline, uh, my mum's got a bungalow, and last year I went swimming in the sea. What a beautiful thing. Uh, anyone here like going swimming in the sea? It's yeah, just, it's, it's different, isn't it? It's a swimming pool. <laughs> And I thought I was swimming on my own, and I wasn't swimming on my own. And this is a poem about that, and it's called We Swim Together. Mm. I walk here, my bare skin hugged by hot summer air. The sky's more relaxed here. It doesn't have to jostle against tower blocks with no idea of personal space. Polluting mornings with their monstrously polite words, colossal resentments barely covered by their appropriate workwear. 
Don't wear grass down to Pebble Beach. Naked eyes greet sea. Hiya, sea. A large, round face stares quizzically back. The kind of face that would suit a monocle. <sighs> it's a seal. Mm -hmm. I never knew that seals were so massive. I never knew seals so suited monocles. <laughs> he watches, silent chuckling, as I inch my clumsy way from blazing land into chilling water. Never knew what the arched bits of my feet were for. Underwater, iced toes clench as sharp stones slice soft arches. If I wore shoes less, my feet might be tougher. I might be tougher. Deeper, deeper, take forever. Seal is still watching. His quiet face communicates a hundred gentle words, words too gentle for voice. He's letting me know what is what. I am his guest. I really want to impress, but I don't know anything about sea. I feel really naked. Seal doesn't care. We swim together, and I never knew that not knowing matters so little. We swim together, take forever together, where sea feels warmer than land. Thank you very much. Shut up. You all. If I've made anyone in here my life partner, I'd be tempted to cheat on that one with everyone else. <laughs> You're that magnificent. Okay, so in keeping with, with uh, showing my rage, I tell you what I hate, I hate it when poets talk about uh, poets that inspire them. And they don't say a poet, they say a singer. I hate that. I hate, and I'm going to do that now. I'm such a hypocrite because um, the person who really got me into writing poetry was a poet, but he's more famous for being a singer. Anyone here a fan of Mr. Leonard Cohen? Yeah. 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 So uh, he was the guy that really got me like, and I've got to admit, I do like his poetry. I am more of a fan of like his words he's turned into songs. And uh, um, uh, people really criticise performance poets. The whole, um, the whole uh, prejudice is that if you perform something, if you're big and camp and flamboyant, then you know that's somehow to the detriment of the words. And I really, really bothers me. In my opinion, performance poetry, all it is, is just saying stuff you care about and just trying to say it well. And it doesn't have to be big and flamboyant. I love that because that's my natural lean. But Leonard Cohen, he's a <coughs> performance poet in my eyes, as quiet and still as he is, just the measured emphasis he puts on words. So occasionally I try and emulate him, and I've tried to do so with this next poem. It's a poem about the fact that, um, as a vegan, I don't just like the cute animals. <laughs> you know, I like all animals, and uh, one of my favourite animals is uh, is the snail. So how cool are snails? I mean, they look like aliens, which is amazing, <laughs> and uh, they're just fantastic. I could watch snails. Whenever I'm walking somewhere on a rainy night, it takes me twice as long to get anywhere because I'm like picking them up, and, like, putting them by the side of the street so they don't get armed, you know. Um, they're probably really angry. I took ages to get there! <laughs> so, um, there's another quiet poem showing my range, showing my range, you know. So it's another quiet one and it's called Snail and it goes like this. <clears throat> When the rain calls snail out from sleepy snail dreams, crawling out a restful place no human eye has seen, silent snail 
calls to rain. Let's wash this city clean. Trail wraps the paving cracks and litter in between. Rain is calling a snail through the graying of the street, through a swollen puddle stretching out its concrete seat, and to a green red apple. Naked core torn indiscreet. Apples travel half the world to fall crushed under feet. I sit dry inside my flat as rain calls down to snail. People caught out in the storm curse the sleet and hail. Flail back to brick-high homes locked strong against the gale. Back inside our big brick shells. So wrapped in our own trails. Watch the green-red apple. Tender innards battered, split. Watch. The snail passes by beside the apple pit. So easily killed, his small life spilled by just one similar hit. I watch this snail brave the rain from where I safely sit. Thank you very much. Okay guys, I'm going to pull one final poem for you, one final poem. I do have um, as many books as I can take in hand luggage with me. Um, they, are, they are 10 euro each, um, but if you're, you really passionately want a book and, um, you know, you're skint, um, you know, you really, really want one, you know, barter and whatnot, um, because, you know, I'd hate that. I will say this. That you've been an amazing audience, and I don't understand why you'd want to deny yourself the treat you deserve. <laughs> <by yourself. laughs> Those games, <laughs> they're cheeky, chappy ways. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've got two books. Um, if you like, uh, if you like uh, humorous anecdotes about violent anal sex, then. Uh, <laughs> My first book is full. <laughs> My first book is is um it's got some 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 lovely uh, cuddly poems about um about how much I love my mum and uh, being a lad learning to ride my bike and uh, Manchester public toilets. So, uh, <laughs> so that's my first book. I was in my twenties when I wrote that. And here's the new one. This one's I'm a bit more mature now. There's, there's, there, there aren't, there's still jokes in this one. There's, there's not really the rude jokes in this one. This is the mature book. And uh, yeah, so there are two books. I'm going to end with one from this one actually, and it's a love poem for me, wonderful fella. I flirted with you so unshamedly tight. <laughs> Who can blame me? Who can blame me? And yet I've been in a monogamous relationship with my wonderful man for seven years, people! <laughs> and I've been seven years! Now, gays are like dogs, so, you know, seven gay years, that's like, you know, 56 straight years. <laughs> it's amazing. And we're both big sci-fi fans. Any sci-fi fans here? No. Well, this part is going to go down the storm with you then. Yeah. OK, we really are. We love, like, Doctor Who, Battlestar Galactica, all that nonsense, right? So this is a time travel love poem where I invite you, my audience, to travel with me to various ages of my relationship with my marvellous, marvellous fella. Um, and yeah, it's that. Before I do the final poem, I'll just say two things. That we are um, collecting the funds for the marvellous, marvellous animal uh, sanctuary. And, uh, you know, that's donation based. That'd be magnificent to support them. This is a vegan island event as part of... Uh... <laughs> Thank you. 
you said the postcards as well, if you want to buy them, they're for 10 euros available. <laughs> yeah, and please do so, please do so. Um, I'm really grateful, I want to say a huge thank you to Vegan Island for asking me over. Can we give Vegan Island a round of applause? Hey. Did I mention I have books for sale? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got books for sale. All right. So here's my final poem. It's called Time Travellers. Cheers for listening. It goes like this. Time travel to our past. I always wanted to meet a man who looked good holding nails between his teeth. And you look dead sexy holding nails in your teeth. You know how screwdrivers work? Understand hammers? Your arms strong enough to lift me when I'm falling apart in the supermarket, crying in the biscuit aisle, chewed up nails, spiking teeth. You're a man who can hold nails in his teeth, but there's never been one time that you've tried to mend me. I will never make sense in the way that a Spirit level makes sense. My wooden bubbles are all wrong. There are times I'd really love to twist how I stand, pretend I am right angles, proper straight, but you love me crooked, weird, and bent. I would never look good holding nails in my teeth. But I look damn sexy in fishnets. <laughs> Time travel to our present. Vegan Island, Cornucopia, Dublin, 2012. Time travel here. You, me, outside, yelling. Broken words, broken yelling. Stupid words, breaking not while I'm yelling. My sentences are punctured, commas, pus. I've severed colons. I'm talking shit. <laughs> you look like the sky, open, still. Why was I yelling? You used to come from Tunbridge Wells, but now we've rewritten our pasts so that I've known you since forever. You tell me, Tunbridge Wells would love to have a good yell. To connect so heavy it hurts, but Tunbridge Wells cannot even touch without wincing. Tunbridge Wells is never gonna let us just be us, queer, sexy, and yelling. Hey, guess what? We have yelled so hard, we've erased Tunbridge Wells from time and space. <laughs> time travel to our future. People say you look like Doctor Who, so I know you can do this. <laughs> Tell me that a queer could be Prime Minister. Or that gays can now be gays on daytime TV. Tell me that supermarkets have now got designated areas for panic attacks. <laughs> <laughs> little rooms, little rooms where they'll play at the B-52s and give you stuff to make out of pretty sick glitter and potatoes. <laughs> Tell me we're together, old, but our love keeps regenerating and I will still have hair. <laughs> Immortal hair! Tell me you love me beyond end of days because I'm so in love with you. Let's make this sci-fi epic love where the heroes 